Good morning. You're listening to your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. I am attorney Wade Skalski, and this is Wade Beyond the Courtroom. Today, joining me on the board is Mike. Mike, how are you? Hey, doing well. How are you? I'm glad that, again, we're going to talk about something you can't see in the radio, but I'm glad that you got the uh, memo for gray today. It's like the new... Uh, the new it's the new Dress black code, and yeah. then the new orange, I think. So it's gray. So how <laughs> we was went your, there on yes, a Sunday? How was your week? My week was uh, great. Actually. Good, Very good, good. Yeah, hot but nice. So we're going to be talking about three things today. Three things, right? Uh, the Volkswagen scandal, the hedge fund bro, and Ragnar the Viking. Ah. All of these are exciting. All of them sort of have a theme of what I like to call is uh, capitalism, good or bad. I'm thinking VW owners now are probably feel very cheated. Well, here's the deal. And so yeah. actually, I, it, the, I don't know if you're not familiar with the scandal, is that what happened was is that Volkswagen actually programmed its cars, its diesel cars, to uh, trick emissions tests so that they wouldn't uh, show on these tests that they would have these bad uh, sort of pollutants coming out of their cars. Right. Okay. And so uh, on 11 million vehicles. Now, first of all, my first question is, is that like, look, like I get caught at my house if I try to like eat the last chocolate, right? Yeah. I can't think of someone sitting to themselves, hmm, 11 million cars. I think we can pull this <laughs> off, right? How do they think that someone someday is not going to find this? And it's the same thing with regards to, I don't know if you remember the GM scandal with the ignition. Yeah. Uh, they had a bunch of people that, uh, I think they put in uh, um, millions of faulty ignitions that they knew that they were just going to basically right. uh, kill people. Uh, and GM's like, oh, we don't care. So. Uh, basically, um, you know, the the research that I've done on Volkswagen is the reason why they did that they did this is that uh, they wanted to be number one in their segment of the car market, and these ambitions sort of fuel the scandal, right? And so I'm going to take a tack on this that most people are going to think uh, is uh, a little unusual, but I actually think that this scandal is good. Uh, and, and here's why. So everyone, there's a big push in the media today to be fighting about, oh, the the uh, capitalism is bad and, you know, in terms of all these runaway corporations and things like that, right. right? Well, when a scandal like this comes out, it actually, in my mind, is very good for the marketplace for two reasons. One is they got caught, just like the GM, the GM guys got caught, sure. right? Uh, so that means that the system itself is sort of doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's sort of, it's these things are popping up and they're like, oh, we need to fix this. And two, everyone's really mad about it. So all these countries are going after them and Volkswagen's gonna, from a legal standpoint, so we can talk about that for a little bit, uh, Volkswagen's gonna pay a huge legal price. Sure. Uh, but the most importantly is where it really hurts them is they're gonna pay uh, in the marketplace because a lot of people are gonna be like, well, I don't wanna buy a Volkswagen car and it's gonna have the exact opposite effect of what they wanted. Is this more of an environmental problem, you think? How does this affect the end user? Of the, the owner of a Volkswagen. Well, if you buy your car because you're like, hey, I want to buy a, I, I want to get the sort of the psychic value of, of enjoying a car that, in my mind, doesn't pollute the environment, you know, in terms of, or it's a, if I have to have a diesel vehicle, these diesel vehicles are better than these other diesel vehicles, sure. then yeah, you're going to uh, be hurt in those ways. And I don't if, know if that's a big deal to you. Yeah, and also in performance, I'm sure yeah. too. So, uh, you know, and and the issues here, those like, what happens if you own a company, right? And now you have all these Volkswagen trucks that are all these doing these pollutants. Right. And in certain countries, you have to pay uh, for certain carbon emissions or whatever. Uh, basically, with regards to your business, may lose money now because you thought you had one type of truck delivering all of your stuff, and now you have another. Yeah, I think more so in Europe, diesel really the norm. Right, as it's not as much as a big deal here. I mean, it's. it's it, I mean, people people buy them. Yeah, they have. I them. mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind. It's it's obviously a, a cheaper fill up. Right. Um, and there are those that'll tell you that diesel is actually better for. That lets out less toxins than. Oh, I was told gasoline. there would be no science today on the on okay. the program, but I'm just kidding. So it'll, all, it'll be there'll be a quiz afterwards right. on that. No, but the issue is here is like, and so here's the deal with and sort of uh, the idea of it that oh everyone likes to seize upon this and be like, look at this. Capitalism is bad. Look at these big bad corporations that are cheating everyone, right? Well, I actually have the exact opposite argument. Where I argue is like, well, number one, is that when a corporation gets caught like this, it's like I said, it's actually good for two reasons. One is that uh, the fear of having your company go through so, through something like this uh, basically uh, goes through your entire organization. So now you look at companies like, okay, they're looking at Volkswagen, they're, they're all being like, oh no, you know, in terms of the car industry, right? They look at Volkswagen, they look at GM, and they're like, okay, uh, the 
the sort of the scrutiny on our businesses is going to be much larger now. So we have to get make sure all of our ducks are in a row. I promise you that many car companies, their boardrooms are freaking out right now, and they're going, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to have to relook at everything that are our, our procedures because if we're in the gray area on anything, uh, we got to make sure we get that back into the right area. So we're, look, we're looking at uh, Jetta's, Beetles, the Golf, Audi A3, which I didn't realize was a Volkswagen product. Okay. I guess it is. All right. Um, the Passat, a lot of those. 500,000 vehicles in the States. Yeah. 11, 11 million, million worldwide. Total, wow. Right? Yeah. And there are, and I'm reading from BBC that there are those that say, yeah, it was a, when I bought a car, I wanted to have something that was kind of, kind of green, a little, not to say green, but, you know, better than Absolutely. And, 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 and and I, that's why I chose it. The thing is, like, look, in any in any marketplace, right, in anything, if you take a thousand people, right, and you have them do something, uh, a few of them are going to be bad actors, okay? And so just because a few of them are bad actors does not mean that the whole system is, is wrong, right? So in terms of people will look at Volkswagen or, or GM and they'll say, well, this is why we need so much more regulation. This is why, you know, these these giant corporations are bad. we got to break them up, blah, 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 blah. But I actually disagree with that as I say that this is not the norm, in fact. And when no. we come back from the when we come back from the and break, they're going to pay dearly like oh what yeah. i can see here like 18 billion potentially yeah it's going to be rough so, and they may yeah. not exist anymore but when we come back from the break we're going to talk about something called uh enlightened self-interest in regards to this issue you're listening to your hometown station am 1220 khts welcome back you're listening to your hometown station am 1220 khts i am attorney wade skalski and this is wade beyond the courtroom so right now we're talking about uh when capitalism goes bad yeah. Social commentary. No, but basically, so just like in the Volkswagen uh, situation, you can have really squirrely outcomes sometimes. Uh, but uh, have you heard of this hedge fund trader, Martin, and I can't say this guy's name, Shreely, I think it's pronounced, right? No. So he bought the, his, he bought the rights to this drug, basically, which they use. Oh, oh, oh yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, which they use basically in uh, HIV and AIDS treatment. And he raised it from three hundred or th- from thirteen dollars and fifty cents to seven hundred and fifty dollars in one night, right? Which is on its face a purely speculative move. Okay, yeah. so he's actually not he's not creating anything in the marketplace. He didn't create the drug. He didn't you know do the research. Right. He just bought the rights to it, and then he basically increased the price. And what's called an economics sort of, and if I remember correctly from my economics classes at the University of Arizona uh, many moons ago, in an inelastic. Uh, Economy, meaning that if you have a, a terminal disease right. and you need that drug, you your demand for it does not change com- based on price, basically, because you have to have it. I first saw this story on Facebook, and of course, as is the case usually, first thing I look for is it's the Onion. Is this some some rogue you know publication? And <clears throat> then I read on, and I was like, wow. Yeah, I mean no. this is. I mean this guy is is is, is scou- he's a scoundrel. He is a scoundrel, yeah. and what's bad about it too is that he actually doubled down on it, and he said he was like, "You people don't understand. You're all morons." He was doing all these ad hominem yeah. attacks, and then the 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 company itself didn't do itself any favors when it said that uh, they the uh, so the. <laughs> Everyone was saying it's a 5,000% increase, right? And so everyone's freaking out because that's obviously a lot. Yeah. Uh, and so the company issued a press release and they said, well, the pill was actually $18. So the price increase was only 4,100%, right? Like, I don't know who's running this company let's, over there. Let's but the numbers, yeah. Yeah, there are third graders that know better in terms of public relations than that. So anyways, the, so why do I bring this up in my sort of, uh, my idea of enlightened self-interest, right? Because you're angry. Well, yes, I'm, yeah. I, this stuff like that annoys me greatly, yeah. and this this guy is, is uh, getting hammered. There are people breaking ties with them, and so the marketplace is going to fix this itself. Yeah. Okay, so this pill is not going to. He's not going to hold. I think he's already reduced the price back yeah. down some more. But the 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 deal is though is that the the, the knee jerk reaction in these situations is to this is the exception is to look at the exception and say okay all of the the drug companies and all the drug industries are and all of that right are you know are bad okay. Mm-hmm. And, and, and again, th- this idea of enlightened self-interest, right? Whereas yeah. is this is starts to come into play. There's a, there's a business philosopher by the name of Jim Rohn, right? R-O-H-N, not Jim Rome, the sports guy. Ah. Uh, but Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N. He talks about this concept of enlightened self-interest. And basically what it means is this, is that, uh, you know, when you are in a marketplace, right, um, you want to act in a certain way, not just because it's the right thing to do, but over time, actually, it will be in your best interest. So Volkswagen... 
right? If they would have realized, hey, we want to do the right thing in terms of, you know, make, you know, we want to focus more on let's make our product better instead of trying to fool the marketplace and, and, and uh, make it that the illusion that it's better, right? Then they wouldn't be paying this price right now in terms of, hey, you guys are going to be paying billions of dollars in fees. You may go out of business. It's actually in your self-interest, Volkswagen, to not do this bad thing, right? The same thing with this, this, this Yahoo who does this pill, right? Where he's yeah. like, look, it's in your self-interest not to raise this pill to such an outrageous amount because right. now the whole world thinks that you and the guy that killed Cecil the Lion should basically, you know, go live together in a hut somewhere and you're going to be you're very fearful of what's going to happen. Because and we're in a climate today as well that people are already complaining about the cost of, of medic medicine. Well, yes, that's a and, whole, and, yes. And that's something that, I mean, let's face it, that's that's a life-saving thing or, or at least a prolonged kind of, you know, drug. Yeah. And... For some that are taking that or any drug, I mean that's you know. No, and I agree with you. But what yeah. I'm trying to what I'm trying to say is that is that this guy, if he would have instead of trying to be like, well, I'm just going to try to make as much money as I humanly can, trying to make as much money as you humanly can in, a, in any deal is almost always bad. It's yeah. n it's not it's it's not just bad because you're like quote a bad guy. It's actually bad for you in terms of going forward in deals. There's a there's a term that they talk about with regards to you always want to leave some money on the table, right? Yeah. Because uh, or you can only you can only fleece a uh, a sheep so many times, right? Um, he, he looked at this from a business standpoint totally and forgot about people who actually needed the drug. Yeah, actually, I don't think he, he doesn't care. He didn't look at it from a business standpoint, I don't think. He looked at it as a math problem, right? He yeah. said, all right, I want to max out as much money as I possibly can. This is the most money I think I can get. If you actually look at it from a business perspective, you say, okay, he... He, he's not a very good businessman because right. he would have realized, oh, I'm going to have all of this blowback with regards to from social media, with regards to all these other companies that I'm working with, and we're actually going to lose money on this. I wonder if he considered that. He obviously didn't yeah. because he, he, you know, he's like he was doubling down and everything like that. So, um, you know, the one thing I try to talk with people about that real business people, right? Like people that are in the marketplace that are real business people, yeah. you know, when they look at these things, they actually do look at them through a view of sort of enlightened self-interest for two reasons. One, on the days they're like, yeah, I want to be a good person and I want to do a good thing and I want to help people and all that. But two, it's actually good business because if you don't do it that way, then you have all of these all of these issues coming back on you that hurt your business. So yeah. um, it's, it, it's, and also when we find out these, these things that happen, the marketplace actually fixes these things. So the government regulatory agencies are going to come in and they're going to hammer Volkswagen. They're going to come in and they're going to, you know, they're probably going to do something with regards to this, this hedge fund manager. And if the government doesn't do it, then the marketplace itself will yeah. fix it. So it's not necessarily, um, these tales are not necessarily an idea of, oh, this is how the marketplace isn't working. It's a tale of, oh, these are cautionary tales about how bad business gets pummeled. Right. And people that do, you never hear about people who are running their businesses correctly because they don't get in these kind of jams, if that makes sense. So it's just kind of another way to look at it, uh, basically. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk about something on a real micro level, Ragnar the Viking. Ooh. You're listening to your hometown station, AM wait. 1220 KHTS. <laughs> Welcome back. You're listening to your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. I am a Attorney Wade Skalski, and this is Wade Beyond the Courtroom, where law and culture meet. Mike, my friend, do you know who Ragnar... I'm learning as we go That's here. right. Do you know who Ragnar the Viking is? some guy is? with a Viking helmet that rides a motorcycle. Yes, yeah, so the uh, Minnesota Vikings have a mascot uh, who is called Ragnar the Viking, whose actual name is Joe Jer Jeronich. 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 Okay. And he's been the Vikings, Vikings mascots for like 21 years. From Minnesota. From Minnesota. Minnesota. So betcha. these are my people. Yeah. I, you know, growing up in North Dakota, <laughs> I can see them yeah. across the way. So... The reason why this is important is in sort of in the theme of our show of capitalism gone wrong uh, is that uh, Ragnar uh, was making $1,500 a game, all right? Now, yeah. Ragnar's skill in the marketplace is that he has a long beard, he wears a Viking hat, he blows a horn, and he rides around on a motorcycle. Do you think his beard's insured? I don't know. <laughs> but here's, here's the thing is that if you think about those skills in the marketplace, those are not really unique skills looking like a like a sort of a grubby viking so there's lots of guys who can do that in fact i could probably do that if you just leave me alone for a couple of weeks <laughs> on an island somewhere so the reason why this is important is that um you know when he he's been in with the nfl and the nfl is a you know billion has billions and billions and billions of dollars okay Obviously, it's ridiculous. I think, I think Roger Goodell made like thirty-three million dollars last year, wow. and so he was making fifteen hundred dollars a game for the last, you know, twenty-one years or so, which is not a small sum of money for looking like a Viking as your skill. Yeah. Uh, and 
then he said, okay, the uh, Minnesota Vikings say, well, we want to sort of figure out your role. Let's do a new contract or whatever. And so he came in. He said, I want you guys to pay me $20,000 a game for 10 years. Okay. Yeah. So that's, you know, we're talking over a million dollars with regards to for this skill. And the Vikings said, you know what, Ragnar the Viking, we're not going to do that. And in fact, it's such a ridiculous offer, we're not going to have you at the game at all. So in so there's this uh he, Shot there's, up in the foot. there's this press release that this guy does and he goes, I've never written up a contract. That is not my forte. I manufacture sharpening equipment. Unquote. Yeah. That was his. That was his sort of his defense, right? Mm. And uh, for the sort of his overreaching, because he was like, "Oh man, the the fans love me. Everybody loves me." Uh, and so now he's sitting at home, and he posted a photo on his Facebook account, uh, dressed in his quote traditional horned helmet and fur, yeah. holding his axe and looking forlorn as the game played on television in the background. So, yeah. why am I bringing this up? Besides the fact that I think it's kind of funny. Uh, and it, the reason is, is because this is a similar situation where Ragnar said to himself, well, there's, a, you know, the, the, the Vikings make a bunch of money. I am part of that, and I'm, be, I'm underpaid, right? Yeah. Well, what he failed to realize is that his skill is very easily replaced. Now, he does have 21 years of goodwill with the fans. Yeah. So the fans, you know, they may have, like, an emotional I, attachment to him. But let's face it. They're not spending tons of money to go to a football game to watch it. Watch well, him. you could argue that he's. It's part like going of to a the... Dodger game to meet the peanut guy. You know, the, remember the peanut guy at yeah. Dodger? Been there for years. Yeah, I think he's still there. Right. But again, you're there to watch the game. Yeah, absolutely. Well, but it's so, part of the it's part of the fun. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. But the thing is, is like you know, like the cheerleaders. I think they get paid like fifty dollars a game or two hundred dollars a game. No. some very small number, and they actually have to have a skill. Like they have to dance, they have to cheer, they have to do the like the acrobatic stuff that they do. That's all they get. That's all they get. That's an actual skill. They get appearances and stuff too, though. They do, yes. Okay, I think so, they make out okay. All right, I'm sure yeah. they make fine, right? But listen, I would be annoyed if I was a skilled cheerleader, right? <laughs> and this guy with a mangy beard is riding around on a on a on a Harley, you know, asking for twenty thousand dollars. So how many game. game? How many games months do the Vikings play? Well, there are eighteen home games every year. So, or I'm sorry, eight. There are eight home games, and then whatever playoff games they have, because there's a sixteen game schedule. So, you know, it's one hundred sixty thousand dollars a year working once a week for eight weeks. That's not. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, for Ragnar the Viking, right? <laughs> and anyway, so the whole thing is to bring this all around. It's a dangerous like, job, too. Is, is Ragnar the Viking should have sat down and asked himself, what kind of leverage do I have, right? And yeah. instead of looking at it as a math problem and saying, well, I think they can afford $20,000 per game, it's the exact same thing as the, as the Yahoo guy who's, who's jacking up the, the AIDS drug 5,000%. It's right. the same thing as the Volkswagen right. people. It's like, we're going to do this because we want to be number one, right? Yeah. It's they, they run afoul because they look at they look at the money with regards to as a math yeah. problem and not from a business perspective, from enlightened self-interest. Because yeah. he definitely could have gotten a raise, okay? Yeah. Um, you know, he could have he could have maybe even gone to like 3000 or something like that. Because even $1,500, he hes he's doing something that he obviously loves to do. Exactly. He, he himself... Well, and his wife is the one that got on the... It tricked him into auditioning. Right. For it. So it wasn't even his idea. His yeah. wife was the one that yeah. coaxed him to do it. So. And, and like his whole job is he manufactures sharpening equipment. Now, I don't know if that's a play on words that he, you know, the swords as a Viking or something. But like this guy, you know, he gets to participate in the NFL. He's not an athlete. He's is not this his only gig? No, no, he he manufactures sharpening, sharpening equipment. Where have you have Where have you been? What Mike? Is, this this is the third of, time I've said yeah, this. Geez. That's a. I th thought you were talking metaphorically. That's a uh, that's a min that's a Minnesota job. Right after uh, I also smoke meat. You, you betcha. Right in you my betcha. smokehouse yeah. out back. So, uh, and I'm sure he has a couple inoperable cars on his lawn somewhere, <laughs> uh, which is a probably common, ice fishes as well. Yes, exactly. Commonplace yeah. in that part of the world, uh, which I lived in. So, but my whole point is this: is like, look, is that. Uh, you know, the marketplace, uh, strangely enough, takes care of itself, and this concept of enlightened self-interest is something worth exploring, and uh, it's fun to talk about on a Sunday. So, I really enjoy talking about this with you today, Mike, and I'm glad. That, yeah, I'm glad you got your uh, your gray shirt just like mine. I'm gonna grow a beard now, so I, can... I like it. I like it. Well, you've been listening to your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. I am Attorney Wade Skalski, and this is Wade Beyond the Court.